Hey everybody. If you are considering buying a 12 string, maybe your first one, you've heard them on records, you've seen people play them on videos and heard them on albums and things and you're thinking, wow, what a great sound. Maybe you've had a chance to play one in a music store and that, that chime has uh, just really gotten into your subconscious and you're thinking about making the, the leap into playing 12 string. Let's talk about a couple of things. I saw a person asking on Reddit a few days ago, saying like, well, what kind of music can I play on one? Or what can I do with one? And uh, should I get one or not? You know, and so they're just kind of throwing the idea around. And of course, you're going to get all kinds of opinions depending on uh, people's experience with them. Uh, very few people, though, you're going to find are dedicated 12-string players. For most guitarists, it's a sideline. Uh, in my early development, when I was about 17, when I got my first 12 string, uh, I remember uh, uh, my dad, uh, I was thinking about getting one and my dad said, hey, there's a guy at work who's got one for sale. Uh, would you, uh, would you uh, be interested in that? And I said, well, how much does he want for it? And he said, about 90 bucks. And I said, well, that sounds pretty good. Let me take a look at it. So he talks to the guy, brings it home. And it was a, it was a nice Takamini. Back in the days, Takamini used to make copies of Martin guitars, and it was a copy of a D18 12 string. And so it, it was a really nice instrument. It had a nice hard shell case and everything. I told my dad, it's sold. <laughs> and so, but when I took it out of the case, first thing I did was just play some harmonics on it after I tuned it up. And that sound, wow, that just like rewired my brain. All the little memory engrams and all the synapses just kind of realign themselves to make that sound. What a great sound, just that chime. And 12 string just has a lot of cool things that you can do with it. And, uh, if you watch some of my videos here on the channel, you'll see some of the 12 string videos and I demonstrate some of the things that you can do. Uh, but it's a sound like uh, it's really hard to get any other way, but is uh, it's a unique sound. And it's not one that's totally, totally uh, flexible to do a lot of things. You can't play lead guitar on one. You can't plug one into an amp and make it crunch. You can, but it just it sounds kind of weird like that. It has its own thing, its own voice, and uh, everybody who plays a 12-string, they kind of interpret it individually. And so you'll have people like uh, like Roger McGuinn of the Birds, you know, did like, you know, songs like Turn, 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 or Eight Miles High. And then you have like bands like Genesis or the Moody Blues that interpret it in a certain kind of way. Uh, you have Leo Kotke who who took this amazing like folk virtuoso direction, so and or Ralph Towner who's a a jazz guitarist who plays uh, classical and twelve string guitar, uh, but he, uh, he he developed a whole new vocabulary for the instrument. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with the twelve string, but it may take you away from just the mainstream stuff. However, there's a lot of mainstream music that the twelve string is used on. Uh, let's talk about some of the things that, not so much the songs, but some things to consider when you're thinking about buying a 12-string. I've got a list here. Let me pull this up here so I can see it. Guitar body styles. When you uh, go for a 12-string, most of the ones that you'll see in the, in the music store will have this kind of body shape. This kind of body shape is called a dreadnought. The name dreadnought comes from the old battleships. Now, why they equated a battleship with this particular side, but you have just, you know, the big lower bout of the guitar is uh, probably about 17 inches across or so, 16, 17 inches across. It's a little, it's uh, not quite as narrow in the waist, very square looking shoulders. In a minute, I will show you a jumbo guitar. And uh, you can also find these in parlor size guitar or auditorium size guitars as well. The difference in the body sizes and stuff makes a difference in the sound. Stand by just for a second. All right, this instrument, as you see this big, I call this my Kirby Blonde. It's because it's got the natural maple wood and everything on it. Uh, this is a jumbo size instrument. Uh, again, you see this one has a narrow waist and a really big round uh, uh, lower bout on the guitar. Uh, this particular instrument, uh, has a nice balanced tone. Generally what you'll find, the bigger the guitar body, the bigger the, the low end of the guitar you get. But also the depth of the guitar, how deep it is, also makes a difference in the sound. The larger the sound cavity, the more bass frequencies it's going to be able to reproduce. So this one has a little bit different sound, and it's a little bit sweeter sound than the one I was just playing a minute ago.
So it has a little bit different tone. Uh, if you, uh, depending on what kind of strings you put on these, you can make this thing have a really deep, deep, deep voice on it. Or, But it's pretty balanced overall. The Dreadnought guitars tend to emphasize mid-range and low end, less on the high end. This has a little more jangle to it because of the uh, just the design of the instrument. So I don't have uh, an auditorium size 12 string to show you, but generally what you'll expect with one of those is a smaller body size, which may be more comfortable for a smaller person or a woman to play. And if it's, uh, and it's but as a result, it's gonna have a, a less deep tone, and but it could still be very pretty. It just depends on what you want to do with it. The next item on my list is the woods. The type of woods you have in a guitar make a huge difference in the sound. Uh, the, uh, the instrument is gonna either have like deep bass, high trebles, strong mid-range, or it's gonna be just a different balance of those type of things depending on what the woods do. Because different types of woods have different density, different softness, different uh, hardness, uh, different amounts of reflectivity. And so uh, the materials that they're made out of makes a big difference. Uh, most of your entry level 12 strings are going to be made out of mahogany or agathis or some variant of uh, of uh, ma a mahogany family wood. Just because these are a little bit less expensive, uh, they are not as highly figured in the grain, but they can be quite finished quite you know pretty. Uh, and and uh, many of the guitars in this category will have uh, laminated uh, woods that are used to that. Laminate means that it's a plywood. That in other words, they take a pretty wood and then they put a less pretty wood underneath it and they sandwich it together and glue it together and it makes it very strong, very durable, less resistant, it's, uh, or rather it's more resistant to cracking uh, and uh, warping over time. So you can take a less expensive instrument and make it pretty durable so it'll last you a really long time. Uh, the more expensive instruments are those that are made out of fine tone woods that are gonna be solid. In other words, that from top to bottom of the piece of wood, even though it's milled pretty thin, it's gonna be one piece of wood. It's not layers of wood that vibrates more freely and it can make a richer tone uh, for, your, for your instrument. And so all your higher uh, value instruments are the ones that have the solid woods. Now this doesn't mean that necessarily that the, uh, the, the laminated guitars are, are, are undesirable. There's many cases, if you want a guitar that you're gonna you know, take to college and you'll be traveling back and forth, you know, it's gonna be in the trunk of the car or on an airplane, or you're gonna, it's gonna, you're, the guitar that you're gonna take out to jam sessions with friends, or you're gonna go to the beach with it. You don't wanna take your nice Martin or your nice Gibson with the, with the, the, uh, the solid woods that it's an expensive guitar and you're gonna take that out there and let that get banged around. That's what you want the inexpensive guitar for. So most of your beginner level instruments are those laminated woods. That said, they don't particularly sound uh, bad. They can sound pretty good. Uh, one of the things with the 12 string is that the, the, the 12 strings, you've got almost double the amount of tension that is on uh, from, you know, from the, the nut to the bridge down here that's pulling on the guitar's body and neck and things. So the laminated woods are stronger, but the, the, the 12 string transfers a lot of energy because it's over 200 pounds of tension on the top of the guitar. So there's not a problem transferring energy into the top. Uh, so in a 12 string guitar, you can still have a very pleasing sounding guitar with a laminated top that's very strong. Uh, the top woods, speaking of the top, are usually made out of spruce. Sitka spruce is the most common type because it's light and it's strong. Way back in the days when airplane propellers used to be made out of wood, like in World War I, World War II, they used to uh, use spruce for the struts and for the propellers and parts of airplanes because uh, it was very lightweight but very strong. And so that's what's used for uh, most stringed instrument tops and guitars are a member of that family. There's some different varieties of spruce. Sitka spruce from Alaska and Northern Canada are quite common, but there's like red spruce and uh, there's cedar you can get uh, for it has a distinctly different sound. My preference is alpine spruce, but you only find that on premium guitars generally. Uh, that's the, the European spruce that's grown up in the Alps. The grain on those is different, and it does have a different sound, and it's a very strong wood, and it works great for a 12-string. However, if you're getting a guitar that's got Sitka spruce, 
that's perfectly fine. You don't have to be a, a, a snob over the tone woods. Uh, just get what sounds good and what looks good to you. Uh, you're gonna find a perfectly suitable guitar uh, with the different types of t uh, woods and things on it. This is a Dreadnought with mahogany back and sides. As you can see, there's probably some reflection here. And it has a laminated spruce top. So I'm gonna just play a little bit for you on this one. It has a distinctly different sound than the other two we played so far. sounding guitar. Uh, an expensive one. If I was going to go out to the beach, <laughs> I'd take this one with me. I'd take it out camping or something. This is the one I would worry about less because the uh, the price of it's not very expensive, but at the same time, it's very durable. Uh, the laminated top and sides are going to last a long time on this one. So that's just one of the, the considerations when you're shopping. In the under $300 price range, you're probably looking at a laminated top instrument. The way you can tell is when you look at the specs of the guitar, if you're looking at it online, if you're looking at it on uh, in the, you know, the hang tag in the music store, it may say like spruce top or select spruce top. The word select is just something they throw in there to make it sound special. But in that case, it's a laminated top. If it says solid top, then that's the wood that is solid from top to bottom. It's not a plywood. It's going to be a little more fragile, a little more sound, uh, a little more tone that you're going to get out of it. Uh, one of the things about solid woods is as the guitar is played and it vibrates, the uh, the wood, they, we, we call it opening up. I don't know if there's something literally that changes in it, but what happens is that a solid top guitar if you have it for 10, 20 years, that guitar is gonna sound better every year you own it. And when it's a 10 or 20 year old guitar, it's gonna sound just really amazing, way more than the day that you bought it. So that is just one of the things that a spruce top guitar, if it sounds good in the music store, you know it's, and if it's solid top, it's going to sound much better years down the road. Laminated top is gonna to stay pretty much the same because it's levels of plywood. It doesn't go through that same process of opening up. Right. So the next thing we're going to talk about is tuning machines. You are going to spend a lot of time tuning a 12 string. It's just part of the beast. Uh, you can use an electronic tuner to help tune them, uh, but most electronic tuners just do a spotty job. You'll develop an, a good ear for it over time. Uh, the, there's an old uh, saying from the lute. The lute was an ancestor of the guitar from the Renaissance period and it had about 14 strings on it. And the people that used to play them used to say that they spent half their time playing them, uh, half their time tuning them and the other half playing them out of tune. Uh, so 12 string can be a problem for tuning. They depend on the guitar and the construction, uh, the type of strings you use, the, the adjustments that can be made to it. Uh, they can be pretty stable, but uh, there's the, you're always going to spend more time tuning a 12 string than you do uh, a six string guitar. It just kind of comes with it. It's the sacrifice you make for that luscious tone. So tuning machines become pretty important. Uh, there are two different varieties that you'll find. Uh, the kind that are on this one, these are uh, full size uh, uh, tuners. Uh, these are the Grover's, uh, it doesn't say Grover on them, but they're clones of Grover tuners. And, they, uh, and these are the full size tuners that you'd have on a six string guitar. This particular 12 string was custom made and I specifically had them lengthen the headstock so, because it's got a really long one, longer than standard, so I could put full size tuners on there. Most uh, 12 strings have little mini tuners on them and they work just as well, but uh, the, the, I'll just, the stability of the, uh, of the, the full size tuners is just a little bit more, so that's something I wanted on this particular instrument. You can also get what I call six to a plate tuners. On the back, there'll be like one metal plate with different tuners on the back that are all, the, the, you can see the open gear of them, like the little worm gear, and there'll be six, uh, two plates with six on each side. Those are less reliable. They, they don't hold their tuning as well. They require a little more maintenance, a little more lubrication. Dust gets in them, they squeak. Uh, they can, uh, but you only find those anymore on really, really like vintage instruments. 
Uh, I don't know of anybody who makes a modern 12 string, even in the beginner class, that is, uh, that, that, is that has that six to a plate kind of thing. That's just old vintage guitars that you'll find. Uh, so tuning machines, uh, you will find, generally have a 14 to one tuning ratio. That's pretty much standard anymore. Uh, they've come down in price so much. It used to be, it'd be almost, you know, 60 to 100 bucks to get a nice set of tuners. Now you can get a decent set of tuners on the guitar, you know, in a budget price range. And it's really not so much of an issue anymore. Uh, but uh, the t tuning, you know, make sure you do have good tuning machines if you buy a 12 string. Check, make sure they're not loose, there's not any play in them, that when they tune up, they do tune to a precise pitch. If you're new at guitar, hopefully you're not buying a 12 string the first time out. Uh, you want to start on 6 string because it's going to be much easier to learn on than, than the 12 string. But if you're a, already a guitar player and switching over to, to 12 string, then check your tuners. Just make sure you have you know, a good quality tuner on there. Now let's talk about strings. The strings are a big component of the 12 string and it's a big component of your sound. Uh, as we talked earlier, something outside here is buzzing. The neighbor out there has got some construction work going on or something. Uh, so uh, there are different types of strings that'll have things like bronze, brass, 80-20 bronze, brass mixtures. Uh, there's Monel strings. There are silk and steel strings. There's uh, all kinds of different varieties and they'll give you different tones. Uh, my particular preference is for silk and steel strings. They are the softest on your finger. They're the easiest on the guitar to extend the life of the guitar. But it may be a tone that, that you don't particularly care for. This is a nice soft. <laughs> Nice bright tone to them. But you can get strings that have more zing to them, more sizzle, I call it. And uh, the what happens is you go with the bra brass, brass or bronze, bronze and brass, put that word together, you get brass. How you get huh, bronze or brass strings have a lot of zing to them, a lot of brightness, a lot of cl clarity, but they are also prone to noise. I and mean, when you have 12 strings on a guitar and you're moving your fingers up and down, finger squeaks can become a thing. So the finger noise is a little bit less on silk and steel strings. They are also, the tension are a little bit lighter. Uh, on, a, on an acoustic guitar, six string acoustic guitar, it's about 65 pounds of string tension. On a 12 string tune to full pitch, it's around 220. Uh, it's just really a lot of tension. Uh, and so the lighter strings you can go, the more you can manage that tension. It's easier on your fingers, it's easier on the guitar. Uh, one of the things that you'll run into uh, over time that, that the ailments that old 12 strings will get uh, it's, you get bowing of the neck from too much neck tension. That means that the tension on from the strings pulls the neck forward and it makes it like a bow. It's curved. Uh, another thing you'll see is what's called bellying, where the top of the guitar is not flat anymore. It'll start to rise up like a belly. And sometimes you'll even see the bridge begin to tip up and tip forward. Uh, those are some ailments that you'll see from using uh, strings tuned to full pitch. Uh, so uh, silk and steel strings just seem to help with that a lot. I just re really like the tone, uh, but the, like I said, it's, it's up to you. Uh, I have used medium gauge strings uh, and for doing what's called down tuning. Down tuning is when you detune the guitar down from its standard pitch. This guitar is tuned to standard pitch E A D G B E for the pairs. The uh, the some 12 string players will tune down to like a C or a B or a D. And in that case, because you have slack and the tension so much, you can put a heavier gauge string on and to do that. Uh, that's something that you'd only do really as an advanced player once you know what you're doing with one and you're looking for a particular sound like you're trying to emulate Leo Kotke's sound, for example. He tunes down into that range with his guitar, almost into the baritone uh, guitar range. So strings, that's, uh, one, that's one of the considerations there. Uh, silk and steel, bronze, brass, it makes a big difference. You want to go with, with as light a gauge as you, your ear and your, uh, what you're hearing inside your head will, will allow you to do. Okay, this one is tuned one half step low. So. It's 
actually a little easier to play. And it's got deeper bass notes. But it's not tuned to standard pitch. If I play with other people, I had to put a capo on the first fret in order to be able to play you know, in the same key as them. This is, if I'm playing a D here, I'm actually, what's coming out of the guitar is a D flat because I've tuned the whole thing one half step flat. In the past, I have tuned anywhere from a half step low to uh, four half steps low, depending on the type of strings I was using, the type of tone I was going for, the type of 12 string I was playing. I have five different ones, so, uh, so sometimes I do different things with them. But down tuning is an option. Uh, you, this can lengthen the life of your guitar, take some of the, the tension off of it because when you tune down, the strings are pulling less. That's one thing. The other thing is sometimes you want to sing in a range that's a little bit lower, and so you can tune down into that range. You can always capo up, but you can't capo down. You have to detune the strings in order to get there. Uh, and then sometimes it's just a question of the feel. If I'm trying to do something that's particularly complicated, and I, and I don't want to have as much string resistance, I can tune this down, which is probably the main reason why Leo Kotke tunes so low. Now, I've mentioned him several times. There's probably nobody that's ever defined acoustic 12-string uh, in, in the last 100 years like the way he has. He has been the definitive player on 12-string, uh, and he tunes way, way down, sometimes as low as a low B-flat on this, uh, this six-string pair. So down tuning is definitely a thing and you can experiment with different string gauges as you tune down. But sometimes it's just for the sake of comfort. You don't need to have muscly hands. Sometimes you just want to play something that's nice and relaxed, but intricate. And by down tuning, you can make it a little bit easier on your hands to do that. All your modern 12 strings have a truss rod in them. If you play, uh, if you buy a Guild guitar, one of the unique qualities of them is that they have two truss rods in the 12 string neck. That allows you to adjust the straightness of your neck on both sides, uh, depending on the, the tension that you have on the bass and treble side. Uh, that makes for a wider neck, but it does give you a lot of adjustability on a 12 string. Uh, 12 string, uh, Truss rods is, are found, like in this guitar, it's inside the sound hole up underneath the fingerboard. You'll see like a little hexagonal little nut in there and you take a, an Allen wrench and you can adjust it quarter turn, half a turn. And what that does is it's like a big molly bolt that's inside your neck. And it counteracts the pull, forward pull of the strings. It pulls back. A two-way adjustable truss rod allows you to adjust forward and backward a little bit more. Most modern guitars have those in there. Some old guitars like old, like pre-1975 Martins uh, usually uh, have just a steel rod inside there and they're not adjustable at all. If they bow or, 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 or anything like that, you gotta send it to the, to the, either to your maintenance people at the factory or to a luthier in order to get that corrected. Uh, so the truss rod is basically to counteract the pull of the strings forward on the guitar. So some of them, some guitars like my other one have, has a little plate right up here that allows you to access the truss rod from the, the top. Uh, so either way, from the top or from the bottom, it works the same way. Uh, these are just a little bit easier to, to get to if you if just go through the sound hole. You don't have to unscrew anything or any kind of little cap or anything at the top in order to get there. So that's what your truss rod does, but uh, the, if you are knowledgeable about those, you'll check it. When you play a guitar at the music store, most likely they have not adjusted the truss rod in it. And when it comes to whatever it's set at the factory, and you can usually use that to, to straighten the neck and bring the action down a little bit. But on a 12 string, it's like really critical because the, the pull of the strings is so much a good truss rod is going to make a big difference in being able to. And it's something you got to tweak and check even seasonally. Uh, temperature, humidity, all that will affect the guitar's neck and the playability. And if you know how to adjust the truss rod, that will uh, help you maintain the guitar in peak condition. Uh, problems that you'll run into with uh, uh, over the life of a 12 string. If you have one for a long time, you may have uh, issues with like the neck bowing up if you don't have the truss rod adjusted correctly or sometimes you just get a truss rod that's at its maximum setting of tightness and there's no more uh, slack that you can take up and the guitar especially if they're like 20 30 years old uh, it may pull the, the neck up and bow it a little bit bellying is one thing that we talked about and that's again where the uh, 
the wood on the body will kind of swell, makes a little hill right here that you can see. And that bellying will raise the action on the instrument, make it virtually unplayable. And the other one is the pulling up of the bridge. The, the bridge, depending on the type you have, is constantly being pulled up and this way towards the, uh, the, the top of the neck from the pull of the strings. And over the life of an instrument, you may just, you, that's just something that you'll check whenever you uh, change your strings. If you start to see a little gap down here, then just your bridge is starting to pull up, then that's something that's gonna have to be repaired. They have to, a luthier will have to take the bridge off, remove it, re-glue it. That's a very precise measurement that they have to do with that. Do you see that on, it's, a, it's not a question of cheap 12 strings or expensive 12 strings, it's usually just a question of age. And it just depends on the guitar. This guitar here is probably you know, 20, 25 years old and uh, it's, it's doing great and it doesn't have any problem with it. And it's not a question of brand or whether it's an expensive guitar or not. It's just that the natural glues and stuff over time will age and it's under constant, constant pull from the strings. So those are some of the considerations. Uh, other things that you can think of are like the types of woods. Uh, this guitar has maple back and sides. Uh, the other one I played here, let me pull this one up. This one is, uh, oh, it's called Bubinga. It's an African rosewood. Rosewood is a, is a premium wood for guitars, but you can't import it into the United States anymore. It's an endangered wood. They usually it comes from Brazil. Uh, or India, and so you, because it's endangered, uh, they, we can't import it into the United States anymore. But uh, Bubinga is a, is a tone wood that's very much like rosewood. It looks a lot like it, and it sounds a lot like it, and it can make a big difference. Uh, this neck on this instrument is maple. The instrument on the neck on this one is uh, mahogany. So there's different types of woods that you can have, and they all make a difference in the tone. Uh, the best thing you can do is just play them, see what you like, what sounds the best to your ear, and then you can decide what you like from there. What can you play on a 12-string? Well, almost anything. Think of all the different, you know, rock songs and stuff you may have heard and stuff. You know, Stairway to Heaven is on 12-string. A lot of Led Zeppelin stuff is on electric 12-string. Oh, uh, you have the Beatles used the electric 12-string a lot. Uh, Rush, Genesis. Oh, I can't, uh, oh, uh, a lot of uh, early uh, 60s records and stuff. Uh, it's, it was, it's a sound that really, uh, uh, people love to hear it. They don't know what they're hearing quite often. When I mean, you listen to a record, a lot of songs, a song will become a hit simply because of the sound of the 12-string on there. Uh, uh, I used to play in a band where I had an electric 12-string guitar, and any time there was a number where I'd use that, uh, that particular guitar, it seemed like the dance floor would always get more full. People just loved the sound of the song with the electric 12 string. Uh, think of like Hotel California, or uh, I'm trying to think of one, Happy Birthday by the Beatles. Uh, Mary Chapin Carpenter's uh, uh, Passionate Kisses has got electric 12 string all over it. Uh, there's, just a, there's a gazillion songs that you'll hear that have electric 12 string in the mix, and it makes a big difference. So anyway, uh, those are some things to consider while you're uh, you're thinking about getting a 12 string and uh, if you get one hope you have a great time with it I have enjoyed playing 12 string all my whole life as being my primary uh, instrument doing some uh, check out some of my instrumentals here on the channel and you'll see some of the fast finger picking kind of things that I do with it uh, but it's just a lot of fun to play and it is a unique voice and you can find something that's very original and you're playing and have a great time with it and be very fulfilled. So thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe and share and uh, check out the other videos. And thanks for again for watching. Bye everybody.